Welcome to question of the month, ladies and gentlemen. It is a blessing to be here again today or this month. Let's put it this way. Um, we have a different format of how we're going to do these questions of the month uh, almost all the time moving forward, which we're going to have somebody here, a person of Christ, dialoguing with another person, particularly me at times. And we will be tackling the most interesting topics that will benefit the Christendom. All right. So beside me today is a faithful person in Christ. Uh, he serves in our church here in All Nations for Gospel Church, Cambridge. And he is a blessing to the entirety of what we do here. And so Joe, Joseph to be exact, is his name. And he's going to be blessing us with a nice conversation as we talk about the topic today. Hello, everyone. Well, we're here today to ask Pastor Nana about the question of the month. And the question of the month is, Pastor Nana, how do we win people for Christ? How do we win people for Christ? Okay. Um, before we get into any uh, steps, um, I want to use a scripture, a couple of scripture, a couple of passages that uh, really helped me um, over the years in... Um, I'm not the grandiose soul winner, but with scripture, I am motivated mm -hmm. to do what I need to do. So let's look at Proverbs 11 verse 30. Okay. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 11 verse 30. I'm reading specifically from the new King James version. And it says the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he who wins souls is wise. So the Bible here is telling us that winning soul equates to wisdom or winning souls equates to being a wise person. Mm -hmm. I think that's incredible Absolutely. because it takes a lot of strategy to really get somebody to want to know the Lord. Absolutely, because yeah. you have to speak to their heart in order to fully speak to them to bring them to Christ. Got it. Exactly. Exactly. And then there's another passage, which is really a practical passage mm -hmm. um, that I really look at. Um, quite often, if we can turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, and we're going to go through a couple of verses from 19 to 21 and 20, then 20 to 23. It says here, for though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I may win the more. And to the Jews, I became as a Jew, that I may win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. So in other words, those who are very legalistic, you know, cross the T's and dot their I's when it comes to the legal matters of morale, mm -hmm. um, he knew how to connect with them, okay? And then he says those who are not with, those who are without the law, he also became as one without the law, though he's under the law towards, uh, sorry, though he is... Um, He's not being without the law toward God, but under the law toward Christ, mm -hmm. right? Then he goes on and says that I might win those who are without the law. So those who are lawless, right? Those who don't think much of the law, he's basically showing them how to, the liberty is here, but it's not the way they think. But he's going to find a way to create conversation and uh, just relate to them, have a common ground where he can relate to them without having to break the law, of course. Absolutely. Right? And then he goes on to further say, um, he says, to win to the weak, I became or I become as weak, right? That I may win the weak. I have come, I have become all things to all men that I might by all means save some. Think of that. So he has become like others, or has brought himself to a place where he can be so relatable to all types of people that he may even win, not all, but at least some, right? Then he goes, now this I do for the gospel's sake that I might be a partaker of it with you. So he does it for the guy. It's not that it's, it's a joyful thing to see somebody come to Christ, mm -hmm. but it can also be a very daunting task depending on what you're trying to do or who you're working with, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so I have strategies, mm -hmm. yeah, that um, I have 
used over the years. I've seen other people use it. I use it. And uh, these strategies have really, really assisted me uh, in seeing some type of uh, results when it comes to getting somebody established in Christ. And what would be your first method in getting them established within Christ? Okay, so my first method is, I would say, love them all the time. Ah, that's an interesting one. Love them all the time. It, it's one of the more difficult things to do, but it's if you are filled with his love, mm -hmm. you'll be able to give them the love of Christ. Because it's not your love you're giving them, it's the love of Christ you're giving them. Absolutely. Because you're so filled and consumed by the love of Jesus Christ that you want to share that same love to that person or people that you do. And the Bible says uh, love wins all the time. Always. Right? And it says also love covers a multitude of sins. Right? So that's my first uh, uh, method that I use or one of the methods, one of the first methods that I can use or have used to win somebody to the Lord. And that makes a lot of sense considering that Jesus had spoken to us and said the law that he wanted us to live was the law of love. Yes, exactly. It wins all, it conquers all, uh, it breaks down people's worries, fears, and all these things, right? Um, and it removes guilt mm -hmm. from the life of a person. Absolutely. Right? Uh, my other method that I use, I call it take them out to lunch. It's a unique one. Uh, and that's a figure of speech. It's really to feed them. Fill their belly with something. And that makes so, a lot of sense. Yeah. So it can be a coffee, a tea. Um, it can be uh, um, inviting them over mm -hmm. to, to get a, a, you know, a lunch, breakfast, a dinner. Now, candid, if it's your ex-girlfriend, you don't, and, and <laughs> you, know, you don't do that. Yeah. But I'm talking about the general situation or the common situation where it's not in that kind of circumstance. Uh, then you invite them over or uh, you go to their place if they would, are willing to invite you over, or you take them out to an actual place where you both can just have a place that is not set up, uh, a safe space, right? Where you can talk to them. Because one thing that I've seen is that you have to remove the person from the group. They're, people are easily influenced by groups. Mm -hmm. So if you remove that one person that you may want to target, or you want to target all, but you remove them one by one, meaning you tell this person, hey, you want to go out someday? I want to go out with you someday just to uh, have a, just to chill, just to have a conversation. They're willing to listen to you when you're, when you're settled, chill, and relax, right? So take them out to lunch is one of the strategies that I... It's like that old saying too, like uh, the easiest way to a person's heart is through their stomach. You got it. You got it. Um, and, and Jesus did exactly that. By right? breaking the bread and the fish with yep, all those people. Yeah, and he fed 4,000 and 5,000 and they heard. And they heard. Exactly. Uh, my other strategy, so my third strategy, I guess, is you invite them to home fellowship. If your church has home fellowship groups, home groups, connect groups, there's different names for it, uh, cell groups, um, you can invite them to that. It's some people are, they're willing to come to a home mm -hmm. before they come to a church. I don't know what this uh, weird sense of what people have, but they have it. Which is, if they come to church, the whole church will burn down or they will burn down. <laughs> I've heard that phrase. Have you heard that phrase before? Oh, too many times. Yeah. And so they say that all the time. And I'm like, uh, it won't burn down. Mm -hmm. You know, murderers have come to church and God has not burned down the place, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's not that. It's the fact that we want to make sure that it's an easy transition if they do have that kind of uh, belief, mm -hmm. right? So nowadays, because of this whole thing that's happening, we have virtual home groups. Right? In person and virtual. So you can literally send them the link, tell them to click on this or remind them, and they can come and encourage you, motivate them to come. Right? Uh, and in person, same thing. Uh, it's probably near the neighborhood, and so they will come. Right? And then they will, they will see the community at a smaller scale, the church at a smaller scale, and they will feel much more warm and welcome in a smaller group. That also makes a lot more sense because at the home fellowship, as a newcomer, you can feel a lot more relaxed as a as got compared it. to being in the church where you feel like you almost have to put a face on. You, you know? got it. You got it. Exactly. And then there is um, the normal one, I would say, I would call the normal is inviting them to your church. Um, the simple invitation, you know, I have a flyer with me like all the time. Let's see. I think I even have a flyer with me right now. I have a flyer with me all the time. 
And for those who are watching, see, we create flyers and it's easy to hand out. It's easy to give out. Um, it has church information, what we provide, the contact and everything. You may, you may not be able to preach the gospel to them and maybe you're running quickly to go and get groceries or buy something. So you, you actually may not have the time to create that conversation, mm -hmm. but you may have a few seconds on, on your clock. So you give them the flyer because it's easier to, especially if they're talking to the opposite sex, they don't want, you don't want them to think like you're trying to talk to them for the wrong reasons. I've had that before. So that's why the idea of the flyer even came through so that they understand this is an official thing mm -hmm. and I want to invite you to church. And you'll be surprised. People are looking for churches. Absolutely. People are, but nobody's, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, showcasing them or giving it to them to let them know, hey, this is our church and this is my story. You know what I mean? So, and that little piece of paper right there by handing it out to folks that you meet at the grocery store or wanna, it adds a little extra bit of professionalism to, to entice the people to come. Exactly. When you have an actual flyer, it's like, okay, this person is connected to something. Mm -hmm. So mm, let me check it out, right? And we've had people come out as a result of that, right? And then I have the, another strategy or another uh, method, which is let your life speak. This is huge. This is valuable. Uh, meaning, let live your life. Don't go out of your way to show your life. Mm -hmm. Just live it. And when I mean live it, live it in Christ. Not in a way where you're being self-righteous and boasting that you don't do this anymore, you don't do that anymore. Even if you don't do those things anymore, and they do, it doesn't help to make them feel guilty about it or condemning them. No. Live your life in love, as we said, love them all the time, but live that life of servanthood, right? Live that life where you are, you are able to relate to them, connect with them uh, in a way where you can create common conversation, but at the same time, they can tell, hey, this person has Christ in them, right? Or maybe they don't know it's Christ, but they know that you're different. Absolutely. That right? makes a lot of sense. Yeah, they know you're different. So you don't have to go and sin with them or smoke weed with them and tell them about Jesus. That's not, that's not what we're saying. We're not saying do what they do. We're saying live your life, but in a way where it's to their understanding. Mm -hmm. As it comes back to our first Corinthians script, uh, scripture that we need to kind of build that rapport with those who may not believe, but we still need to live our life so we can bring them to Yeah, them. like, I mean, if you if they see you and they know that, hey, you, you gossip with them and all that, they may not want to go to your church. Exactly. Why did I want this Jesus with this person is just like me? Mm -hmm. Talking smack behind my back or whatever. Exactly. So you can't, we can't do that, right? Mm -hmm. We got to live the life in the way of Christ. Absolutely. Let your life speak. The greatest way to preach the gospel outside of talking and bringing and telling people is your life speaking and you'd be surprised you may get an opportunity from somebody at work saying hey i saw that you you're different what is it or they may know you're a christian and they may come to you privately and say hey they, you may not even realize that's what they're doing but they're telling you about their life struggles and mm -hmm. guess what that's the opportunity that's the opportunity where you right can there. speak to them and talk to them you, about christ you got it praise god you got it and then the next method the sixth method is good old evangelism. Ah, that's but there's a twist to it for me, how I do it, mm -hmm. how I learned to do it. Um, and it, it's, it's been very fruitful. Mm -hmm. So normally you give out a flyer, which is very important. Um, you, a flyer that may talk about Christ, the gospel in short term. And then, or there's a flyer about your church or all these things. Um, what I do is I try to before I leave that conversation, if I have a conversation, if they give me the opportunity for a conversation, what I try to do is I make sure, if possible, I request if they need prayer. I don't ask them, um, I don't just leave that conversation if I don't have to without prayer. Right. Because prayer just softens the heart of a person. Huge. Right, and it brings a personable thing to the, between the two of you, or, between you and the other person or persons. And so I always, I mean, you can testify to that. I can. Right? And I, I, would, I would love for people to hear uh, a little bit of your, your, how you came here so that they can understand what I'm talking about right now. Well, I mean, just to give some folks uh, an idea of what happened is I met Pastor Nana and Brother Eric from our church. They, Brother Eric had moved in across the street and 
Pastor Nana had come over and he had spoken to me and evangelized. And what really sold me, what really got me, was the fact that Pastor Nana asked me, what would you like to pray for? And my dad, he's got his health issues. And the fact that you prayed so earnestly for my dad made me realize that this is a church that needs to be checked out, needs mm. to be looked into. And coming here, once I came here the one time, I've never looked back. And I praise God. I praise Jesus for that. Amen. But you know what, Pastor Nana, that brings me to a question, though, with evangelism. Yes. As a Christian who wants to try to bring the unbelievers into the church to, so they can share the light and the love that is Christ, how is it that you keep your passion up to bring uh, people to the church, to bring them to Christ without being brought down by the world? That's a good one. Um, I learned through Scripture, through our senior pastor, um, there's a scripture in Psalms 23, right? That mm -hmm. says that uh, uh, my cup runneth over. That's what David uh, prayer says. My cup runneth over. What is that cup? That cup is the anointing, the spirit of God. That cup, see, he says runneth over. That means it overflows. My cup overflows. You've heard that phrase as well. It's runneth over or overflows, depending on the translation. Mm -hmm. It means that to the believer, we have a cup. You don't give what's inside the cup that's not what you offer that's not what i offer to people what i offer to people is the overflowing part so that i'm not given the part that is at the tip of the water uh, at the tip of the cup and then if they drink that it'll be drained right i need to always be overflowing and how am i always overflowing because that overflowing part is what i give to people mm -hmm. Right? That's what I have. That's what keeps me strong. That's me really meditating on the Word of God and refreshing myself in the Word of God. That's me spending time in prayer um, and restoring myself. That, those places, those things uh, bring me back. My devotions get me to a place of overflow. So when I'm offering things to people like the gospel and consistently, whether they reject it, make it difficult or hard, I'm overflowed with the Holy Ghost. With the love of God. Mm -hmm. So I keep offering it because I keep, uh, uh, God keeps refreshing me when I go into his presence. I see. And the way how you do so is just by constantly meditating daily upon the word. To always make sure your cup is overflowing. Yeah. Personal devotions will do the job. We don't want to make it too complicated. Mm -hmm. Prayer and personal devotions will do the job. Where you spend time in the word of God, making it read to you right making it encounter you allow the word of god to encounter you allow prayer time the presence of god to encounter you it will refresh you that you can keep going and keep going and keep going but if you don't read your bible you don't pray and you're still trying to evangelize you it's a spiritual work you will be drained mm -hmm. you will be drained it doesn't mean you won't physically get tired even though you are overflowed because the human part of you will come out eventually but it won't be like the the person who uh, as keeps giving just their cup instead of the overflow and they keep getting drained. It won't be like that. It'll be a different type of fatigue. It's a fatigue that just says it's time to just physically rest so that you can keep going. I see. Yeah, and it's not a common one. That's a very good clarification right there. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. And then the, the last method um, that I have here, the seventh method, uh, sharing your testimony. Oh, man, this one is huge. Um, why? Because... There's one thing that nobody can take from you is your story. Right. Your story is the um, reality of somebody else's uh, um, problem or s their life. Mm -hmm. And so sharing your story, especially when they know you, or even if they don't know you. you can, I used to share my story to strangers. And even if they don't know you, guess what? They hear that story and they go, wow, that's different. Mm -hmm. right so the testimony sharing your story telling them this is where i was and this is where jesus has brought me this is the encounter i've had with christ wow. awesome wow that's amazing yeah well pastor nana thank you so much for breaking that down and explaining to us uh on how to win souls for christ and i would also like uh for you to pray for our listeners so that we can reach out and bring more people so we can reach more people to Christ. Amen. Absolutely. Uh, let us pray. Father, I just thank you so much for the kingdom, for the people who are listening. Some of them have these challenges and 
perhaps there was clarifications today. So Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you will strengthen each person, that you will give them the overflow as they spend time with you. As they meditate on the word, let it rejuvenate them. Let it strengthen them. Let it renew them. And give them the wisdom that they may become all things to all men so that they can win some. They can become all things to all people so that they may win some. Give them that grace, that wisdom that comes from above to be able to win and establish souls in your house. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you all so much for joining us. And we'd like for you to check out our website at anfgccambridge.org. Yes. As well as please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please like, follow, share, subscribe for more Press content. that button right now. So important. Right now. So we can bring more of these important questions to you and bring the enrichment of God into your life. Mm -hmm. Praise God and praise Jesus. And of course, before you leave, do us a small favor and check out some of our other videos, questions of the month, prayer guides, sermons, and join us 1 p.m. every Sunday, Eastern time, for our service. All right? Your life will never be the same. Thank you, and God richly bless you. Until next time.